A scorned professor, failed gardener, and veritable basket case in his day, Friedrich Nietzsche is perhaps remembered as history's most infamous pessimist. The German-born philosopher who once said that, quote, God is dead, God remains dead, and we have killed him, wouldn't at face value seem to have much correlation to one of America's most beloved fictitious poster children. However, Nietzsche's beliefs, relatively unrenowned in his own life, have been bastardized across the spectrum ranging from Nazis, his own sister, to the creators of Superman, Jerry Siegel, and Joe Shuster. Though the legacy of Nietzsche's philosophies have taken on a life beyond the man who espoused them, an examination of the odd life of Friedrich Nietzsche may make some sense of how his teachings ended up so far removed from what he could have ever predicted or wanted. Nietzsche was born in 1844 in Germany, ironically to a father who was a Lutheran minister. His father died by the time Nietzsche was five years old, leaving him to a household consisting of all women, his mother, grandmother, two aunts, and his younger sister. From an early age, Nietzsche excelled in school, and his scholastic talents carried him to a position as the head of the Bessel Philosophy Department at the age of 24, the youngest to ever hold the position. It was around this time when one of the most factually debated and pivotal moments in Nietzsche's life is said to have occurred. Nietzsche was a known misogynist who believed that, quote, women were God's second mistake, behind not anticipating men would not find animals entertaining. Potentially fueling his disdain was the fact that by all available evidence, he contracted syphilis after visiting a brothel with friends. Though he told another friend that he ended up there by mistake, and rather than engaging in any sexual activity, he played piano all night because it was the only soulful thing present. Nietzsche's health was frail throughout his life after the brothel piano gave him syphilis, and likely contributed to his continued down spiral of mental health. He was forced to resign from his professorship by the age of 35, and he would spend a majority of the remainder of his life arguing against the concepts of traditional values and religion. Though his writings were undoubtedly controversial in his day, it was only upon his death and the subsequent transfer of Nietzsche's literary work to his sister Elizabeth that the philosopher's teachings were taken to their categorical extreme. Specifically regarding the concept of the Ubermensch, aka the Superman, a concept not monopolized by Nietzsche, the idea was that this man would be Caesar, but with Christ's soul. However, Nietzsche's sister was a fervent anti-Semite, something that made Nietzsche himself very uncomfortable, having once said that he would be in favor of having all anti-Semites shot. Elizabeth would go on to publish a handful of Nietzsche's unfinished works after his death, with her own creative oversight, through a lens that painted her brother as an early adopter of fascism. A fervent supporter of the Nazi party, Elizabeth Nietzsche's funeral in 1935 was attended by Adolf Hitler, who cited Nietzsche's posthumous works as a justification for his creation of his superior race. While the political and cultural upheaval ensued in 1930s Germany, in part justified by writings that were published in such a way that was never intended, the edited writings of Nietzsche put out by Elizabeth simultaneously became fictitiously incarnated in American form by Jerry Siegel and Joe Shuster, who wrote a short story in 1933 entitled Reign of the Superman featuring a telepathic tyrant who was unanswerable to any being but himself. Though the character was eventually evolved into the modern-day incarnation of the all-American superhero, the pseudo nietzschean concept was applied to and can still be evidenced in the modern-day Lex Luthor character. Though Friedrich Nietzsche in his day was a troubled man whose belief system epitomized the concept of playing devil's advocate to traditional values in Christianity, what he proposed was an arguably flawed set of philosophies based on his own experiences and the world he viewed around him. His legacy was twisted by the hatred within his sister and misappropriated by one of the most evil regimes in history. Though Nietzsche's philosophy goes far beyond the Ubermensch concept so profoundly linked to his legacy, it is somewhat fitting to the man that his teaching is iconicized in a fictitious supervillain representing the antithesis of what to strive for, but now locked to the confines of an on-screen madman, rather than a real-life one. If you enjoyed the video or learned something new, please be sure to hit the subscribe button and the like button and share it around to your friends. Thank you.